President Trump refers to the COVID-19 coronavirus as the invisible enemy. It's the enemy that you can't reach out and touch. You can't really see it. You can't understand it. You, you don't know its motives, its psychology. So how do you defeat it, right? It, it's, um, it's unlike most things, we, most other enemies that we're used to dealing with in the past. He's called it the war against the invisible enemy. How do you fight a war against something that you can't see? It's very difficult, right? Not what we're used to. I think there's another enemy out there that's also invisible that spreads even faster than the coronavirus spreads. It's one that spreads by the phone calls. It spreads by texts and social media. It spreads via television, um, via advertisements, all types of ways. It just spreads so much faster than, and it doesn't require human contact. It doesn't require someone to come up and touch you or breathe on you or sneeze near you. It can spread over the airwaves from miles and miles away, from continent to continent instantaneously. And that is fear. Fear is something that can spread so fast and if not checked, can cause lots of problems, can be as bad in many ways as the virus itself, right? Fear doesn't require social distancing. It can outlast that very easily. One phone call, a text, a social media blast, a tweet, something done like that can immediately reach millions of people and create fear. So fear can spread much faster than any infectious virus can. And it can do, I think, just as much harm in just in different ways. Fear can make us make poor decisions or no decisions at all. Fear paralyzes. Fear kills creativity, which is essential for problem solving in different difficult situations like we have now. And fear is so contagious. What stops fear? Well, it's our mindset or our approach. Do we choose to focus on the fear or on understanding the facts and how we can, and, and how we can work with those facts and how we can educate ourselves to make better decisions, to still be cautious and educated, but not afraid. So I urge us to think more about caution and making decisions that are productive and proactive as opposed to fear and pulling in. Fear is one of those emotions that can often make us withdraw and pull in and be afraid, fear again, to make decisions, right? And what does that do? It doesn't really help us. It, 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 does, it doesn't liberate us. It doesn't help us run out and, and help our neighbors and help other people. It usually is one of those emotions when it's intense that brings us in and pulls us in. Well, yes, we need to avoid social distance, and we have to keep social distancing. We need to avoid large crowds, right? That's good, but that doesn't mean we have to live in fear the whole time while we're doing it. So whether we focus on fear or we focus on getting the facts and education and then making right, the proper decisions or the best decisions we can make at that time with the information we have, that is what will determine whether we can pull out of this thing faster or whether we're gonna have more problems. Fear hurts our immune system. It makes us more susceptible to the exact things that we might be afraid of, right? So let's use caution, but not fear. When fear tries to take me over, I try to refocus on my faith, okay? Mo hopefully all of you have some type of faith. You believe in some type of higher entity, higher being, which can help you and us through these hard times. Hopefully that's the case. So I focus on my faith, but I also focus on those amazing people that have been here before us who have overcome their fears. They've faced their fears and they've overcome them. One of them is FDR. You might be aware of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, right? The president who lasted four different terms. And he overcame polio as a child and basically hid it throughout his adulthood as well so he could be president of the United States without most people realizing that he had such a crippling disease. One of the, one of the favorite quotes I like from him is, I'm gonna glance at it, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something is more important than fear. Let me say that again. Courage is not the absence of fear, 
but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear. And what is that something else? Well, that's your future, your families. It's solutions to what, what's going on right now. That's what's more important than focusing on the fear of the coronavirus itself. It's hard to think straight sometimes and to plan our future and to stay healthy and do all the things we need to do so we don't succumb to the virus when we're fixated on the fear and what it could do to us and our loved ones. So let's use caution, but not fear. Let's assess the situation with a clear head and then take action. Don't succumb to the fear. FDR's distant cousin, Teddy Roosevelt, was uh, always one of my favorite characters, and I used to write book reports on him when I was a kid. I enjoyed reading about Teddy Roosevelt. Um, he was always a very sickly child and often um, was, had to be stay inside. He had severe asthma on top of some other things. Um, yet he, he overcame it. He never, he never quite conquered it because you, you, some of these things you can't, but he overcame it. He didn't let it affect him. He didn't let it hold him down. And he became known as one of the great American outdoorsmen traveled around the world doing all kinds of amazing things and of course led the Rough Riders up San Juan Hill in a very courageous battle. But Teddy Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, um, has a, an excellent quote and that is, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? So show others how much you do care. I think Governor Cuomo of, uh, New York, of, of New York State has done an amazing job of, of doing that. Every morning he gets on the television in front of his audience, which is his people, the, the tens of millions of people of, of the state of New York, but also it's the people around the rest of the country, like ourselves watching this. It's the whole world watching it. And he disseminates all this excellent information, well thought out, well planned information but it works and he communicates so well because it's care, he cares. And it's evident, it's obvious that he cares. There's no doubt that he cares. When he gives us stories about his mother, Matilda, when he gives stories about brothers and sisters, not just his brothers and sisters, but brothers and sisters, his, his, his kin, his, his um, New Yorkers, his fellow New Yorkers, that he's there to help. It's obvious that he's passionate about trying to help these people. Okay, you see the despair uh, in, in his voice as he's, as he's trying to reach out and get resources to help these people. But the message really rings strong because he really cares and it's obvious he cares. So show others how you care. Show them by, by call your neighbor and, and when you're on the way to the store and see what you can pick up from them from the grocery store. See if you can help them with the groceries so they don't have to go outside and weather that. Drop the groceries off at the front, at the front porch for them and knock the door and, and go back to your house and unload your groceries. You know, how, do we, how can we use this time to show that we care for other people and in our neighborhood, our communities, or our families, of course. Show your kids, show your siblings, your parents, your work colleagues, that you care enough for our elderly, for our compromised in the, in the community, that you're gonna obey and heed the messages sent by the federal government and the state agencies and the medical professionals. Heed their advice saying about social distancing, about staying at home, shelter at home, all the things we keep hearing. Go out as infrequently as you can, and when you do, do it in a smart way. When I go to the grocery store, I went uh, a few days ago, I went first thing in the morning before there were many crowds, and when I had a good chance of the distancing from, from the night before, germs that might have been on out there the night before on surfaces, it's a good chance they would, would be gone by the next day. So pick a time when there's not many people, when you have the lowest chance of exposure, get in, get the things you need, and get out, right? So do things that we care. Listen to the government. Listen to the things that they're telling us and let's all be good citizens. In business, we can show we care too. When we talk to our customers and, and we understand that, you know, much of the economy is shut down. Many of us are working remotely from home, just like our, our business is how, has now moved remotely. I'm working from my home office. But it doesn't mean we shut down the business. We still reach out to customers. We still talk to vendors, right? And when you talk to them, show them that you care first. Talk to them first, right? So ask them how they're weathering the crisis. You just got a low 
power um, notice on my phone. That's why I had to pause there for a moment. But show them that, that you care about them and how they're responding to the crisis. There's a way that you can help them, some advice, some, some help, some, something you could drop off for them, right? Do that first, and then business will take care of itself. But first we show our caring for others, and business will care for itself. As Teddy Roosevelt said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. What great advice is that? So let's help them, help our friends and our families and our colleagues focus on facts and reasonable caution, not fear. This allows for resourcefulness, creativity, and problem solving. Don't we need more of that today? Resourcefulness, creativity, problem solving. So let's focus on that. And won't we let that spread? Let's make that viral. Let's make that go around the world as fast as we can and come back around a few times. Because, you know, we need to hear it every day. Each time, every day we, when we hear this disturbing news and we see how many deaths are out there, we get concerned about that. So we need to be reinforced. I need to be reinforced. I need to think about every day when I wake up that, look, I can choose to be scared and afraid and live in fear, or I could choose to get up get educated, learn what's happened in the, in the last 24 hours, and make the right decisions based on that for my family, my friends, the world, right? We can all do that, that's our choice. God bless you, hope you all stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon.